All right, so we got gas. Just want to look at this beautiful guy, bike, guys. Look at how good it looks. I love this color scheme. <laughs> that shit looks awesome. What? What the full Acura? The HP levers. We got these things, which are usually not on these bikes, but I found them. HP rear sets, blue wheels. We are good. The blue tachometer with the needle. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, jeez. I hope someone didn't wreck on a bike. It looks like it. What's up guys welcome back to the hp4 replica series we finally got the tack installed as you saw in our last video and we're just really the first ride after installing this so we're just checking to make sure that nothing goes wrong with the tack and everything seems to be functioning which it seems fine but it has been raining the past couple days and i'm finally glad to get out it's a little bit chilly i'm actually gonna turn my heated grips on on one it's not too bad but it's one a little extra heat another great thing about owning a beamer especially the older ones they still have heated grips so yeah i'm so pumped this little face plate right there like that's like so much to me and the blue needle fucking nasty thing looks sick i love it so we're just doing a little back road cruise right now and everything seems to be functioning perfectly, which is great. So that was not an issue. It was actually really easy once you know how to do it. It's just really, you have to be careful with the needle because they are kind of fragile. I've heard people break them before. And uh, I was freaking out the whole time I was doing it. I was like, God, please don't, please don't let me break this needle. If that happens, then I just wasted all that money for nothing. So I am really digging this 13 double R that, you know, I'm making into that HB4 clone, basically. This is just a great bike. I mean, uh, I'm so happy with it. I'm happy with the way it looks now. It's like a little bit of a one-off now because it doesn't, you know, have exactly all the features that a real HB4 would, but it has enough to basically keep me satisfied and I'm happy with you know what's on it and how it's looking so very pumped about that it took me months to find this freaking gauge cluster or at least one that was damaged that um you know was going to cost me an arm and a leg it just cost me an arm so pretty pumped about that So it's an evening right right now it's basically almost a quarter to seven it's a little bit of traffic out not too bad but that's okay i'm just glad to be out because the fucking rain the past couple of days but at least that's probably got rid of a bunch of you know all the sand and shit so These Michelin Power 5 tires on here are great tires. I would highly suggest them if you want to get some new tires for good street use. These are great tires. I love them. I have them on my 2020 bike and I like them so much that I got them on these. I did have some uh, Dunlop Q3 Pluses, I believe, on here and they were good too, but I'm just definitely a fan of the Michelin. Something I like about this 13, it just, uh, the new ones are, they're so good and they're so flawless that they, they almost seem like they're just a little too smooth. You know what I mean? If you own one and you've ridden one before, you kind of know, 
And this bike feels a little bit more like raw to it. And I love that. I love that raw feeling. It's a, it's a great thing to have. And I feel like these have a little bit more better bottom end than the newer ones do. Which is ideal for street riding, for sure. Man, it's windy out right now. I don't know why it's so windy. It got windy all of a sudden. Ultimately, if I got an auto blipper for this thing, this thing would be freaking intense. I, I love this bike. I'm sorry. I, I freaking love this thing. It's great. Yeah, so tack is functioning perfectly fine. No issues at all, which is great. Something else that I really like about this bike, and apparently it's improved a little bit on the 2023 double R's, is that it barely has any vibration at all, especially with these lever guards on here, on both sides. This thing has like no vibration. I mean, it has some obviously, but it's a lot less than the newer models for sure. There is no doubt about that. And it makes, you know, the ride so much more enjoyable. I think the reason why the 23s have a little bit less than the 20s, the 22s, is because of the, uh, the triple tree clamp. That billet clamp that they put on there, especially on the M1000RR, that definitely helps with the vibration for sure. So it seems like they're slowly but surely figuring it out. I mean, the K67 was a brand new bike, so obviously, and not that it's bad. I still love my 2020. I'm keeping that thing. I didn't upgrade to the 23. I felt like it wasn't really worth it, but maybe in a couple years after they do a new release, um, maybe I'll trade in my bike, depending. I got to see. It just really depends on the features because here I am riding this 10 year old bike, literally. This is 10 years old now. And I'm enjoying the hell out of this thing. I love this thing. Like I said, get an auto flipper on it, golden. The quick shifter is definitely better on my 2020, but this quick shifter isn't too bad. I'm sure with it like an ECU flash, I could get the kill time reduced a little bit and that would definitely improve it, no doubt. But I'm really happy with the map that's on here. It's got some, um, I don't know if it was dyno tuned or what happened to this thing prior to me getting it, but it does have a Power Commander 5 on there and it does have some type of map. So whoever did it, I think did a good job because the bike just feels great. And who knows, it might not be the best thing out there, but I am content with it, so I'm gonna keep it. And maybe down the road, I mean, I could possibly change it, I don't know. So I'm a definitely a big Yamaha fan at heart. Uh, I've had Hondas, I had a bunch of Yamahas over the years, and I love my Yamahas. I still have a 2001 model, which I'm not giving, you know, which I'm not going to sell. I'm keeping that thing. That thing is freaking pristine. The thing is like showroom. And it's just an overall great bike. It just runs. It's probably the best older running R1 that I've ever owned. And I've owned a shit ton of them. At least 10 to 15 of them. I definitely had a couple for sure. And the one that I, that 2001 model, I think is, I think is, oh man, it's, it's in such good shape. You know, I definitely could have lived with the red needle that was originally on the stackometer, but the blue one just makes it oh, so much better. So there's probably going to be a lot of wind noise on the video, so I apologize in advance for that, but you know, it is what it is. You can't control the elements and uh, I'm trying to block it out as much as I can, but it's just, you know, the air is just, dude, we got wind going, so. So nice little cruise on this thing. Get some nice riding in. Feels good to be out. Heated grips are on, so my hands are more than comfortable. I don't even have to turn it on level two. It's just on the first level. And it uh, feels good. My hands are fine. So these bikes have good top end, but the 2020 is on like a whole nother level on the top end. It's just nuts. Those things fucking pull hard especially with like once you get a full exhaust and ecu flash for the 2020 plus models those things freaking rip up top they're monsters. definitely faster than this thing on the top end for sure and not that this thing isn't fast by any means it's it's fast for sure but man th those new bikes are just they're incredible 
And the good thing about these older S1000 RRs is that, you know, they're pretty affordable nowadays. Not everybody has, you know, 16K plus to get a newer bike. And you can find some of the newer 2020 plus models for around 16, 17 and up for sure. They're out there. You got to look. But yeah, these things are great. Someone else riding on some type of bike. I gotta say, whoever did the suspension on this bike, I know the guy said he had it done at some place. He's like, don't change it. He's like, it's dialed in, it's good. And uh, he's definitely right. I could, I could just tell this thing feels awesome. The bike just feels so planted and the suspension feels great. So what's interesting is that this double R it was free to me. I mean, I had to pay for it, but I flipped a lot of bikes over the years and just acquired a bunch of money from doing that. Not a lot, but you know, a decent amount, enough to buy this bike. And you know, I put a little bit of work into it, the powder coated rims, the plastics, the, uh, the white gas tank. What else did I do? I bought, a, I mean, it had a full acro system, but the mid pipe was kind of dented and I still have it. I should try to fix it. But overall, not a lot of money in this to get it to look like this. And it's just crazy the prices that are that people are charging for the real HB4s. I mean, honestly, between this one and the real one, it's really not much of a difference. Engines, the uh, engine is the same, and you know it has a little bit more different electronics. But I really wish that BMW on like their M1000s now, which is, you know, would kind of be like the HP4 in the old days, these bikes, if they made them like 10 horsepower more than like the standard double R, a lot more people I think would have bought these. No doubt. I mean, just something to give it, you know, that little extra specialness to it. You know, like 10 extra horsepower, they could figure out a way to squeeze it in there but they should really do something like that. You know what I mean? I think that it would definitely increase their sales on their, their M1000 models, no doubt, because I mean, you're paying a, paying a lot for the new M1000 double R's, at least 36K or something like that. There was actually one in Jersey for sale that I saw on Marketplace, and I believe it was at a dealer. But yeah, you know, I wish they did a little something more to it just to make it a little extra special. But yeah, this bike, uh, I actually picked it up in Virginia. So that was like an eight hour drive one way and then coming home, hitting traffic and everything. It was probably like, I don't know, 10, 11 hours easily. And it was worth it. And the funny thing was when I went to go get this bike, I noticed probably like a week or two prior that I had the battery symbol on my truck and it went away after, you know, not too long. It was on and then it went off, on and off here and there. So I didn't really think anything too much about it. I thought it was just like, you know, maybe a loose connection on the cables or something. Long story short, on the way home, the battery symbol came on again and it stayed on. And I was like, oh shit. And I was a couple hours away from home, mind you. And when I was probably about, I would say, at least maybe 40 minutes away from my house, the whole power on the truck just died because you know the alternator took a shit and uh it was starting to rain of course of all things right couldn't make it any better by raining so i had no power to do the windshield wipers <laughs> my truck had no lights or anything and it was just barely running so i basically uh you know just gimped the truck home with the bike in the back and I was almost at the point where I'm like, oh, do I just pull over and ride the bike back and leave the truck and get it later or what? But uh, luckily the truck didn't make it back. And just for the heck of it, when I got home, I tried, you know, after I turned off the truck, I tried to start a battery, it was dead 100%. So I just barely made it back, which was crazy. So a lot of times you gotta drive to get some deals and it's worth it. I mean, I drove to Ohio, that was 12 hours one way just to get that R1 that's freaking pristine. And that was, now that I think about it, that it was a long drive, no doubt. But the, 
Wow, the quality that that bike is in, it was worth every penny, and the price at the time when I got it was so worth it. The bike was freaking mint, and it still is, so. Sometimes you gotta travel to get the deals, guys. It's not always in arm's reach. And you know, you make a day out of it. Shit, I worked nine hours and I drove that I worked that day, nine hours. Got home, changed quick, got some stuff, and then I drove 12 hours. That was freaking that was pretty brutal. I was dead. I think I got to the uh, the hotel at like three in the morning or something, something crazy like that. And then I had to be up at like eight to meet the guy, so. On the way back home, I definitely took some breaks here and there, chained up the bike in the back of the bed. So when I was, you know, taking a nap, you know, I wasn't worried. And I was napping in the truck. I wasn't in a hotel or something. I just freaking, I was napping in the truck. I'm really wondering how many miles I could get out of this Beamer's engine. I've seen people, you know, do around 50K. I don't know, obviously, the past owner, how hard he was on the motor, but I mean, there's you know, there's super bikes, they're meant to be beat on, but hopefully, I could at least get 50k out of this motor, no problem. That'd be great. I'll just make sure I keep up with the maintenance on you know, the valves and all that crap. I'll make sure I'll get that done when they get those done at uh, 36k. So, I got around 10,000, a little less than 10,000 miles. So hopefully I get a lot of miles out of this engine. It does seem pretty healthy, at least from what I can tell, which is great. Bike's nice, nice and flickable. Just like this bike. Yeah, so obviously the first ride with the tachometer installed has been successful. So I'm pumped about that. I didn't screw anything up, which was good. And I didn't waste money because it, I got the result that I obviously wanted, so happy about that. I gotta say, the Olin steering damper that I got for this bike, because the OEM one was freaking, it was shot, it did nothing when it was fully tight. Uh, this Olin's damper is awesome really good damper I got it on my R1 as well and I, sh I really should get one for my 2020 I feel it could definitely benefit it and not that the stock ones the uh, the stock stabilizer on the 2020 plus are bad they're actually pretty good but these are the Ola ones are the Olins they're just oh, they're great they definitely are a performance I can't remember how much gas I got in this thing, so try not to go too hard on the bike just so that I could get some miles out of the tank. Just enjoy the cruise, break the tires in some more, you know. Definitely a nice day out, a bit windy, but good little evening ride, almost dusk. Basically seven o'clock right now. So the sun will be going down in a bit. But I'm not worried, I got those HID headlights and they are the shit. HID headlights are awesome. If you like night riding, I would highly suggest getting some HIDs. They're definitely better than LEDs, no doubt. They do take a little bit of time to warm up. So, and what I mean by that for an example is when I first start the bike, if I had LEDs in here, it's automatic like full brightness basically right away for the most part. But the HIDs just take like a second or two to get the full brightness. 
So same thing, when I do my high beam, I turn it on, I turn it on and then, you know, it takes like a second or two and then it's at like full brightness. But totally worth it. The lights on this model actually suck with the halogen bulbs in my opinion. I didn't, I was not a fan of it. I did have a, I think it was, yeah, the 14 double R that I had before this one that I sold. That one had some LED lights in it and I didn't really do too much night riding with it. But the pattern seemed pretty good in the visibility from what I could saw because I did start it up at night. But the HIDs on this thing, they just illuminate the whole road. It's, they're awesome. I can't speak more about HIDs. Sometimes the ballasts do take crap and that's usually what happens. It's usually not the bulbs, it's usually the ballast that goes out. I've had it on my truck for God knows how many years. 10 plus years and I had to change the ballast out a couple times, probably like two I think. But I think one ballast must have lasted like 13 years. It was pretty rare because a lot of times people actually got away from the HIDs because of the ballast were crapping out a lot. But I think if you get some good quality Exeon ones or whatever it is, they're usually pretty good. So if you guys haven't seen the videos on the progress of when I first started getting this thing, they are spaced out a bit on my channel, but just go click on the videos and then, you know, just scroll down and you'll see, you know, Project s 1000 R update number one and, and so forth. And uh, the bike's definitely come a long way. The bike was completely a silver color when I first got it. And now we are basically an HP4 clone, which was the whole, which was the whole goal when I got this thing and of course price effective to make it look the way it is so definitely lucked out saved a ton of money i definitely couldn't the money that i have invested into this whole bike right now to get it to where it is i couldn't buy an hp4 for that even if i wanted to maybe a crash one but I'm... so it was definitely cost effective and it does exactly what i wanted to so very pumped and um you know very blessed to have this bike for sure. I spent a lot of time building, rebuilding bikes that were, you know, that were laid down. We got those all fixed, sold them, made small profits here and there, and over time just kept adding it up. And now I got a free Beamer out of it, so. I'm glad I made the plunge when I did. I was originally gonna get a bike from Ohio from some guy. And uh, he kind of screwed me over. Like, I already booked the hotel and all that crap. And I talked to him. I, I gave him a deposit on PayPal. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to come this day. And, you know, I called him even the day before. I spoke to him and I told him, you know, I'm definitely coming 100%. I'm not pulling your chain. You know, it's like 12-hour drive for me, but I'm driving down there. And then literally probably a couple hours before I was going to leave, I was working and he and he called me and he's like i got bad news and i'm like oh god did you drop it or something and the guy's like no i sold the bike i'm like are you fucking kidding me you sold the bike so i i was pissed i basically started cussing the guy out i didn't give a shit because i don't know where he's from but in my world when someone puts a deposit down on a bike it's theirs unless they don't show up on the scheduled day that you guys agreed to that's just how it works it's not and he's just like, oh, whoa, whoa, the dealer gave me a little bit more money or something. I'm like, dude, if you really wanted a little bit more, I could have paid you. But whatever, everything happens for a reason, I guess. It is what it is. It was less of a drive, and, you know, I still got a good bike. My mileage is a little higher on this bike. Yeah, actually, it was definitely higher on this bike, but that's okay. Not a big deal at all. This bike seems to be taken care of very well. It was only one owner. I'm the second owner of this bike. The guy has a title. Um, you know, and, and when I got it, he was the original owner with his name and only like two miles on the thing or whatever the heck it was. So, second owner of this bike, that's definitely a good thing. But yeah, I was so pissed. I mean, granted that the guy paid for the hotel and he gave me my deposit back, which was only the right thing to do because he totally screwed me over, but it still totally defeats the purpose that when someone puts a down payment on a bike, and it, you know, they're expected to show on the scheduled date that you guys agree to. And if they don't show up, okay, you know, then you could discuss with them, hey, 
you didn't show up, I'm gonna give you your money back, blah, blah, blah. That's a different story. But, you know, when someone, uh, yeah, I was just, I was livid, I was pissed. That's just not the right thing to do, you know what I mean? You really, you really shouldn't do that to someone. But whatever, that's here and over there, and that's over with, that's history. So, whatever, not a big deal. Not gonna go that way that way, let me. I was trying to go that way, but someone is freaking. Oh jeez, I hope someone didn't wreck on a bike. It looks like it. I'm gonna go by there for sure. I'll turn around up here. That's a bummer. Oh man, I hope he's alright. Actually, I'm going to pull into this Exxon and get gas real quick. And then I'll see what the hell's going on over there. Alright, let me fill up this thing with some gas. Alright, so we got gas. Just want to look at this beautiful guy. bike, guys. Look at how good it looks. I love this color scheme. That shit looks awesome. What? What the full Acura? The HP levers. We got these things, which are usually not on these bikes, but I found them. HP rear sets, blue wheels. We are good. The blue tachometer with the needle. <laughs> oh, shit. Got a fresh battery in this thing as well because had an original battery and we only put like almost two gallons in here so I didn't need too much gas but better to fuel up than run out right, let's go take a look see what the hell is going on now stop here for a minute What is going on? Damn, somebody crashed. It seems like they're okay, at least from what I can tell. I don't know exactly what happened, but you can't really see it. So hopefully those people are okay. It sucks, man. You gotta be careful sometimes when you're out here. There's just too many stories of people passing away. It, it sucks. I, I get it. It's part of the game, but you know, you got to be careful. Usually, a lot of times, it's not the people on the bike. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times, it's just the people around us, unfortunately. So, you got to be careful. Oh, these roads are mint. They must have paved it recently or something. These things, this road is nice. Oh, yeah. Nice uh, summer day, you can burn through these. So a shout out to you guys if you made it this far watching the video. Definitely appreciate you watching. Hopefully it's uh, entertaining for you.
guys so i think i'm going to cut it here for this video shout out to all you guys for liking subscribing and watching my videos i highly appreciate it you guys are awesome it really does give me the motivation to keep making these videos so please keep viewing and giving me those thumbs up and throwing comments down i love interacting with you guys you can hit me up on instagram it's the same name as my youtube channel ct adrenaline and uh, you know i don't mind chatting with a few of you guys obviously when time permits i'll do it so you can hit me up there if you want and uh, again guys thank you for viewing and we'll see you in the next video